Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Thursday, February 2nd, 2017. Here are some of today's trends in the news. Well, on the market front, it's a down day. From Asia to Europe to the U.S. A. Only footsie's up a little bit, and Shanghai's still closed for that Lunar New Year. But gold went up, huh? Let's see what's going on. Stocks closed mostly flat on Thursday as investors looked ahead to Friday's jobs report. That's right, come out with a jobs report tomorrow. We'll see what happened in January. And kind of soft because of growing tensions between the United States and other global powers. You ready for this? Investors also contended with the latest news out of the White House. President Donald Trump warned Mexican president on Friday that he was ready to send U.S. troops to stop, quote, bad hombres down there unless the Mexican military does more to control them. Quote, you have a bunch of bad hombres down there, Trump told Peña Nieto, according to the excerpt given to the Associated Press. You aren't doing enough to stop them. I think your military is scared. Our military isn't. So I just might send them down there to take care of it. This guy's out of his mind. You have a bunch of bad hombres down there? What do you think this is, the presidential reality show? I forgot. Yes, it is. Oh, and our military isn't afraid? No. No, our military does a great job. Hey, look what they did in South Korea. I forgot Vietnam. Oh, what about Iraq? Oh, Libya. Yemen. Afghanistan. What kind of moronic talk is this? You got bad hombres down there. Mind your own damn business. Stay home. Ah. So the markets are a little uh, shaky because of what's going on. Hey, and that's why we sent out trend alert. Trend alert. Where's gold going? Play the Trump card. That's right. We list what has been going on since he's been in office just since January 20th. And the reactions both nationally and globally, we've never seen anything like this. This is a freak show. It's the presidential reality show, I forgot. So, as we write, where's gold going? Play the trump card. Gold went up today. And you'll see our forecasts. Gold went up according to CNBC because the Federal Reserve gave no clear signal on the likelihood of a March interest rate increase. That's only part of it. It's the uncertainty, and gold is the ultimate Safe haven asset beats holding anything else, currencies or other commodities. So we see the downside risk of gold very low, and in this volatile Trump administration, poof, where anything could go, anything could change. Just like they did one day, we're going to decide that uh, people from seven nations aren't going to be allowed to come here anymore, immigrants. Or even people, (laughs) they had to keep changing it. People having trouble getting back in who had green cards or visas. They could do anything in a day. And this guy just might be the guy to do it. So again, we do not give financial advice. If you want that, you go to Agora, who we work with. We are trend forecasters, and we see this as a very volatile volatile situation. And that's why we're staying with our forecast for gold. Currencies gyrate on mixed messages. Wall Street Journal. 
Major currencies are posting their largest swings in months, highlighting a growing difficulty for investors and traders to discern the likely path of Trump administration policy. This is from the Wall Street Journal, not the World Socialist Organization. And in other economic news, U.S. crude futures ended lower after choppy trading on Thursday as rising oil stockpiles in America's storage facilities offset evidence that OPEC and other big exporters were cutting production. How many times do you have to read the same thing over and over again? It's the same story. They're manipulating the news to push up the price anytime they can, but the facts are going in a different direction. Again, I've said it over and over and over and over and over and keep saying it. We said it on international TV. Over and over, the top we see for oil is 60 bucks. And on other economic news, India boosts rural outlays. Gets harder on cash. Gets harder on cash. Hey, one of your top trends for 2017. That's right. Going cashless. Cashless society. No more cash. Put it on them credit cards. That's right. Send it through whatever you got to do so we, the government, can watch every penny that you're spending. And, you know, with India's clamp down on cash still weighing on the economy, the government released spending plans amid aimed at bolstering rural development and providing relief to citizens after its disruptive decision to void big bank notes late last year. Big bank notes, you know what they were? Seven dollars and fifty cents around there to fifteen bucks. That's a big bank note in India. And they say they're going to announce a twenty-four percent boost in spending on the countryside, largely through a 25% funding increase for India's massive world work program. Bah, 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 bah. And what does all this mean? It means that you have to prepare for the future. There are wild cards being dealt like we've never seen before. And one of the ways to do that, to consider doing it, is to join us. That's right. Join us at our Find Your Future in Trends Conference in Galway, Ireland, June 10th to 16th. Yep. The website is terrific. We're going to explore the fast-moving, powerful trends shaping 2017, what they're going to mean to your quality of life, your bottom line, and your creative spirit. And this hotel, whew, it's set high above the majestic coastline along Galway Bay. And during the conference, you're going to have plenty of time to explore the natural beauty, vibrant history, and mystic of Ireland. And what better place to see history before it happens than this magical setting? Again, the, the, the conference site is terrific. It's trends, plural, trendsconferences.com. And you could learn more about this unique, exciting conference Sign up now, space is limited, and the link is on the front of the page, it's on the banner you saw, you go to our website, it's there, trendsconferences.com. So, moving on to some international news, White House, Iran on notice, U.S. won't rule out attack. Isn't that nice, huh? Yeah, they sent out that missile which is not against, by the way, the P5 plus nuclear deal. They didn't break anything. But are these new scare tactics coming out of the White House? Because now, after they said that they put them on notice, and here's the quote, National Security Advisor Michael Flynn announced that the Trump administration is putting Iran on notice over the test saying that Ready for this? The test threatens stability across the region and places Americans' lives at risk. How's that for... Bullshit level, DEFCON 5! Oh, yeah, American lives are at risk. Watch out over there in Joplin, Missouri, and Texarkana. Ooh, you better watch out over there in Sea Caucus. What kind of crap is this? 
I'll tell you what kind of crap it is. It's military crap. And they keep shoving it down our throat. How many more losses of lives? How many more slaughters have to start and end with destruction? Before people say enough. And coming from losers, military losers, their track record speaks for itself. Go up and down the list again. We could start with Korean War. Go to Vietnam. You've been to Afghanistan lately, the longest war in American history. Light us into the Iraq War. Libya, Syria, Yemen. And now you got this guy shooting off his mouth. We're going to put Iran on notice. And then they came out with, after this, talking about more sanctions. Isn't that great, huh? Say, keep it up, Trump. Ah, front page story here. In the toilet paper, a record, the propaganda sheet of what they put out. Sheet. Yeah, just take those two E's out of it and put an H and an I in there. Chain of mishaps in Yemen attack on Cato Branch. How's that for a good propaganda line? Civilians likely killed, not likely killed, slaughtered. They destroyed this whole area. Yeah, those commandos went in there. Yeah. Raising questions over planning and Trump's approval of raid. You know his subscribers to the Trends Journal and listening to Trends in the News each weekday night, how we've been pointing out that the New York slime, the toilet paper, has been silent, virtually silent, on the ongoing murders going on in Yemen, supported by Obama, and selling the Saudis all those weapons more than any other president has to do this destruction. But now that Trump is in there, and just to make this clear, President Barack Obama's national security aides had reviewed the plan for a risky attack on small, heavily guarded brick homes, blah, 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 in the village. But Mr. Obama did not act because the Pentagon wanted to launch the attack on a moonless night. And the next one would come after his term had ended. So he was part of this. And it goes on to say... They sent in Navy SEAL Team 6 hoping the raid early last Sunday would scoop up cell phones and laptop computers that could yield valuable clues about one of the world's most dangerous terrorist groups. What kind of crap is that? How many times have I heard that bullshit story? But Trump got the same bullshit line as the rest of the presidents before him, supporting these military actions. Mr. Trump on Sunday hailed his first counterterrorism operation as a success, claiming the commandos captured, quote, important intelligence that will assist the United States in preventing terrorism against its citizens and people around the world. You know what that is. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horse shit. That's Trump shit. It's the same shit that they keep pumping out. Nothing has changed. But it's gotten a lot worse. And here's why. It's gotten worse because we have somebody there that's really power hungry. Listen to his words. I read him earlier what he said to the president of Mexico. You aren't doing enough to stop them. I think your military is scared. Our military isn't. So I just might send them down to take care of it. I. Hey, how about us? Send them? Hey, send your Kushner. Send your sons. Send yourself. 
If we don't occupy peace now, this thing could spin out of control really, really fast. So please do what you can to keep our OccupyPeace.us movement moving forward because if it doesn't, you can see where this is going. And it doesn't look like it's going to be a happy ending. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's trends in the news.